All right, welcome friends, folks, brethren, co-workers, family, worldwide kinship. We are continuing in our Old Testament Bible studies in the book of Isaiah today, and we are picking up in chapter 15. So if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, now's the time to open them up and follow along. Have a beautiful day here in the state of Wisconsin, in the United States of America. And I am privileged to live in a free country where we have opportunity to share the Word of God freely. With some limits and restraints in the public sector, and that's the government's right to impose their own curfews and their decisions, but out in the public place, you can come to the Bears Gym and study the Word of God um, and get the brutal truth. So let's do that. And we'll begin today in Isaiah chapter 15. The brutal truth and Lord willing, nothing but the truth to the best that I can dispense it to you. And we've got a few buggies and maybe in a few bats flying around the bear cave, but it's okay. Don't you be worried. Chapter 15 of Isaiah, the burden of Moab. Moab, for the most part, was an enemy of Israel. And yet you will see there are some in the lineage of Jesus Christ throughout the ages that came from Moab, and we'll study that out on another day. And yet as a whole, Moab is, for the most part, an enemy of Israel. And... God pronounces some judgments here upon them. And the book of Isaiah is mixed with many judgments upon nations that are idolatrous, pagan, wicked, evil. God judges them. I pray that day will never come to America, and yet if you read the book of Revelation, you know the end, you know the end chapter. You know that all nations will turn against Jesus Christ in the end and they will pit themselves to oppose him and his coming and he will slay them. Unfortunately, in the end days, uh, the Bible does say all, all, all will turn against the Almighty for the foolish ideal that they could defeat God. And it's, it's hard for me to comprehend and understand, but it does go on. It goes on now. People that know the truth disobey the truth. Why? Why would you risk your eternal salvation, your eternal home to disobey your maker? Why would you want to do that? When you have knowledge of the truth, obey it. We see here Moab had some knowledge of the truth, but they refused it. And for the most part, they were a pagan and idolatrous nation that opposed God and Israel. In the night, Ar of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. Because in the night, Ker of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. He has gone up to Bejith and to Debon, the high places, to weep. Moab shall howl over Nebo and over Mediba on all their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut off. And that day was an honor to have a head of hair, a big furry bear beard like I have myself. I think it's kind of an honor and a privilege to be able to work in an environment where I can have, you know, a a hair you know, like our founding fathers of America, they all had long hair. It was, it's comfortable, it's, it's, it's good in the wintertime, keeps the cold off the back of your net, and keeps it off, if you're out in the sunshine, working in the sun, it keeps the sun from beating down on the top of your head, 
you know, it's just, it, it's good, you know. But some cultures, you know, they really promote bald heads, very clean shaven, clean shaven hair, you know. But for myself, as a bear, I like a woolly beard and a woolly head of hair. That's, it's the part of the bearification process. And to some extent, Moab, their mourning was to shave their heads and cutting off beards, either by mourning or because their destroyers, their enemies, took them captive and shaved them, their heads, their beards, which was kind of an act of shame. It was a shame in that culture to be shaven off. We see during the time of Israel's, I'll say greatness, King David sent some of his messengers off to give condolences. And that king's advisors counseled that Israel's well-wishers were just spies. And they shaved part of their beer and cut off their little tunic things and sent them back home. It was like a, sh a shame to have their beards cut off. Kind of like, have you ever seen a bald bear, a bear at the zoo being shaved of his hair? No, that's not cool. Okay, bears, bears need hair. Okay. Okay. There's kind of a double meaning there. I'm just giving you a little... That's bear humor. Don't, don't be offended by bear humor. Okay. Now we're coming back to the text here. But really, have you seen a... Do you see an exhibit at the zoo where they say, come see this cool bear, we just shaved his hair off? No, they don't do that. They know better. A bear needs his hair. Okay, enough of that. In their streets, they shall gird themselves with sackcloth. On the tops of their houses and in their streets, everyone shall howl, weeping abundantly. Heshbon shall cry, and Eliela, their voice shall be heard even unto Jahaz. Therefore the armed soldiers of Moab shall cry out, and his life shall be grievous unto him. My heart shall cry out for Moab, his fugitives shall flee unto Zoar and Hefer of three years old. For by the mounting up of Luhith with weeping shall they go it up. For in the way of Horonaim, they shall raise up a cry of destruction. Back in the Middle East, during this era, there was a lot of warring and destruction. It's almost kind of like now, isn't it? You have dictators setting themselves up. You see large nations rolling in there to, you know, do a regime change, and sometimes rightly so. As soon as they pull out, then this, another dictator rises in their predecessors and he starts being a dictator and then you have that whole thing happening over and over again why because they serve false gods there was only one true god during this time there's only one true god now he was known in the old testament as yahweh elohim same same god He told Moses, he says, the I am sent you. The I am who I am. The only God. And even in the Old Testament, when there's a bodily form involved of God, understand that was Jesus Christ, but under his Old Testament name. Because in him, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form. In the New Testament, we know him as Jesus Christ, and there's no other way to the Eternal Father but through Jesus Christ. There's not um, isms or uh, Ahmeds or Udas or yeah, all these, you know, Ishtars and all this, you know, all these are, these are imitations of the truth. And there's only one truth, and that's through Jesus Christ. 
There's only by one name by which we can be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. These nations oppose the one true God, and that's why judgment comes upon them, even Israel to this day. They really reject Jesus Christ as being the Messiah. That's their big problem, as they rejected the Messiah. And they still do, for the most part, with a very small percentage of the population of Israel really accepting Jesus Christ, having been the Messiah that they were waiting and hoping for. Nonetheless, they are God's people, and in the end times, God will deal with them. And they will see that they have believed the lie, that Jesus Christ was not the promised Messiah. They will understand that they have believed the lie, that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah, and that he did die on the cross for them and rose again from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. They will know and see that for some reason in the end that all of a sudden they're going to realize when this false Messiah comes into play, this beast, this false prophet comes to power, they're going to be deceived for a little while. But when these people are revealed, then they will see, wow, Jesus was the Messiah and we've been fooled. Anyway. The reason for all this chaos in the Mideast is because they reject the one true God and they have received to themselves false gods. So we go on. Verse 6. For the waters of Nimrim shall be desolate, for the hay is withered away, the grass faileth, there is no green thing. Therefore the abundance they have gotten and that which they have laid up shall they carry away to the brook of the willows, for the cry has gone round about the borders of Moab, the howling thereof unto Eglaim, and the howling thereof unto Beerlim. For the waters of Deman shall be full of blood, for I will bring more upon Deman, lions upon him that escapeth of Moab, and upon the remnant of the land. This is a severe judgment upon Moab. Let's not kid ourselves. God is love, God is long-suffering, and he's merciful. But if you refuse God's love, if you refuse his mercy, if you refuse his great gift of salvation and practice wickedness in your life, eventually judgment will come. And God is very stern and very harsh with his judgment because it's about where you're going to spend eternity. And God knows how important eternity is. It's serious. It's a, it's a one-stop, folks. It's one-stop shopping. Once you're there, there's no leaving. So understand, get real with God now. Don't wait till it's too late. So with this little short book of Isaiah... It's not too short, I guess. This chapter is very compact. There's kind of a lot in it. More, there's more in it than what really I can bring to you. I'm not really an archaeologist to declare to you all these regions where they were at then and where they're at now. I will just tell you Moab as a culture pretty much doesn't exist except for the peoples that have assimilated into all the nations around them in the Middle East. And that's kind of a, a groaning, I'm sure, if you feel that maybe you were a descendant of Moab. Anyway, Isaiah chapter 15. Very short, short little chapter. And I guess we could call Isaiah actually a pretty big book, you know. We're in the 60s, and when we did Genesis, we only got to chapter 50, so. But in comparison to the Psalms, you know, it's kind of a small book, but really, I guess, it's kind of mid-range, I guess, for the Old Testament prophets. Um, but there's a lot of meat in Isaiah, and as we slowly chew and enjoy meals of God's Word, through the book of Isaiah. 
there's going to be many things we can't really comprehend because either we weren't really there when this all transpired in a historical sense and in the spiritual sense. And some of this is going to be futuristic of God actually dealing with these nations in the end times. So some of this we'll have to wait to play out. Some of this we'll probably have to wait and see how it plays out from heaven. You know. And uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, Isaiah chapter 15. I have. And uh, so we're going to pull the plug there. And uh, we'll pick up next time, Isaiah chapter 16. So I hope you've enjoyed Isaiah 15. And uh, until next time from the Bears Gym, God bless you, and we'll see you, folks.